Hello, this is our lesson on 6.3c, which is dealing with absolute values, really just understanding what an absolute value is and comparing them. So I want to start with what the definition of absolute value is. So absolute value means it's really just the distance a number is away from zero on the number line. So every number is some distance away from zero. Like the number one is one number from zero. The number two is two numbers from zero. The number three, three numbers from zero. So three has an absolute value of three. Negative numbers also have absolute values. And negative three, how far is that away from zero? So what's the absolute value of negative three? It's one, two, three. The key is how far do you have to go to get to this number zero? That's the goal. And you'll notice that it's always going to be a positive number. So this is the distance a number is from zero. And since it's a distance, it's always going to be a positive number. So I'll just put that in parentheses, that it's always going to be positive. OK, and we have a special sign that means absolute value. It's two vertical lines. This means absolute value. So we might say, what is the absolute value of positive 2? Well, positive 2 is, let's do it in yellow. Let's see, 1 away, 2 away. So the absolute value of positive 2 is 2. Let's see, what about the absolute value of negative 2? We write that with absolute value lines. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And eventually, you won't need to count these. You might catch on to a pattern, is positive 2. So the absolute value of positive 2 and the absolute value of negative 2 are both 2, because they're both 2 spaces away from 0. Um, if we're comparing absolute values, you might see a question that says, which one has the greater absolute value? Um, the absolute value of negative 4 or the absolute value of 5? Well, let's see what the absolute value of each one is first. So I'm going to add, here's negative 4, here's negative 5. Here's positive 4 and positive 5. I can get rid of these. OK, so let's see how far negative 4 is away from 0. I'll do it in blue. I guess, yeah. Negative 4 is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that is 4 away. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. All right, and then in green, we'll do the absolute value of 5. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is 5 for the absolute value of 5. It's 5 away from 0. Which one's more, 4 or 5? Five? 5 is more. So 4 is less than 5. So negative 4, the absolute value of negative 4, is less than the absolute value of 5. All right. Let's say, which one's more? I guess I'm going to go on the whiteboard. The absolute value of negative 3 or the absolute value of positive 2. If we weren't looking at absolute values, negative 3 is definitely less than positive 2. But is the absolute value of negative 3 
less than the absolute value of two. Really what ends up happening is the absolute value just becomes the positive version of whatever you put into there. If it's already positive, it just stays positive. If it's negative, it's going to be positive three. One, two, three spaces. The other one, one, two. Three is greater than two. So the absolute value of negative three is greater than positive two. If it said, pick the ones, pick the letter that represents the greatest absolute value. Well, A would be five. B would be 2, C would be 2, D would be 4, so A has the largest absolute value. Um, let me bring up some of the slides. That's really the gist of it, just so that you can see you know, another perspective, that there are two numbers that have an absolute value of 3. There are always two numbers, the positive version and the negative version are both the same distance away from zero. So if it says what number has an absolute value of three, there are two answers to that question. The distance a number is from zero is what the absolute value is. How many steps do you take to get from that number to zero on the number line? Even if you're going backwards, it's not the absolute value still positive. The only way an absolute value can be negative, and this is a little bit tricky. I'll actually wait a second to explain that. I'll explain that at the very end. So we have the absolute value of negative five. So negative five is how many away? One, two, three, four, five away. So it's five. The absolute value of positive 5 is 5 away. 7, 7 away. Negative 3, 3 away. Um, if you see something, that looks like this. It says negative the absolute value of negative 4 equals what? Well, now this negative sign is saying, I want the negative version of the absolute value of negative four. So the absolute value of negative four coming down is four. Well, we got to bring this negative down. It wants the negative version of the absolute value of negative four, which makes it negative four. That's the only way that you can have a negative absolute value is if there's a negative sign outside of the absolute value bars. Um, if this were a positive, like negative the absolute value of five, well, the absolute value of five is five. Bring that negative down because it wants the negative version. So the negative absolute value of five is negative five. The only time that you can have a negative as an answer to an absolute value question. Otherwise, in general, you're going to get only positive answers. And that is because of that sign. You could see, getting a little, little crazy here, you could see negative negative the absolute value of five which would be like kind of the opposite of the negative version of the absolute value of five and when you have the opposite of the opposite these two end up canceling out and it's like there's nothing there at all so two negatives kind of cancel each other out it's like the opposite of the opposite of the absolute value of five well it's just the same thing as just saying the absolute value of five, which is five. All right. And that about does it for our absolute value uh, part of the unit. And we are done with 
this part of integers. Congratulations, I'll see you in class.